third and final match of our sixth week of our 40th year of the Frederick County uh, Public Schools Academic Tournament. I am your moderator, Eric Reichel, and I would like to thank Master Trakonsky, your husband Frank, and the amazing Kelly Meisner for all the help and support as we roll through week six. We're rocking. And now we're going to start. Oh, we got a great match on store uh, here for match three. TJ, Linganor, Middletown, Oakdale, anybody's match for sure. We're going to start with TJ first. So TJ High School. I need you to have four people. I see Ben. Four people with your mics on and your cameras on. There's Ray, Harmony, one more. Oh, did Colin not make it over? I seen Colin. Mr. Uh, Atwell, I think he was asking for the link. It's the same as every week. I think I forgot. <laughs> uh, I had to look at it. <laughs> Elliot, you jump in here. And I'll I'll message Colin on school. Jay. Wait, I just sent him the link. It should be. Oh no, oh, there, him. there he is. All right, so we've got one, two, three, and there's Colin. Four. All right. Welcome, TJ High School. Would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who the captain will be in this round? Um, I'm Harmony, and I'll be the captain this round. I'm Colin Jones. I'm Ben Marshall. Right Wong. Okay, Harmony, you get to make the crucial choice here. Back at A, B, X, or Z. It's all on you, my friend. Um, a, B, X, or Z. I'll go with B. B. All right, these six questions on a variety of topics. One up for right answer. No points off for a wrong answer. Question number one. In what U.S. state will you find the cities of Cheyenne, Casper, Laramie, and Gillette? Uh, Wyoming. Yeah, Wyoming. That's what I was thinking. Is everyone good with that? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, final answer, Wyoming. Montana. Montana. Question number two. What is the fastest snake in the world that shares its name with the nickname of Kobe Bryant? Cobra. Is everyone yeah. good with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Final answer, Cobra. No, it's the Black Mamba, the Black Mamba. Question number three. 10 grams of sucrose are added to a saturated solution of sucrose. How many grams of solid will precipitate, uh, uh, so let me try that again. How many grams of solid will precipitate to the bottom of the container? Maybe 10 grams. Mm, yeah, I think so. All right, cool. Um, final answer, 10 grams. Correct. I'm always delighted when you get the science question right because I don't understand any of it, but that's correct. Good. <clears throat> question number four. What major league baseball player was diagnosed with amotrophic lateral sclerosis in 1939? He ended his consecutive games playing record, gave a speech calling himself the luckiest man on the face of the earth, and died within two years. The disease itself now bears the name of this man who batted right behind Babe Ruth in the Yankee lineup. Name him. Anyone know? Anyone have a guess? No. All right, no response. Uh, Lou Gehrig, Lou Gehrig, very famous, uh, sad story. Question number five, I quote, here once the embattled farmer stood and fired the shot heard round the world. This line appears in a 16 line poem written for the dedication of a memorial in Concord, Massachusetts and called Concord Hymn, named the poet who's also an influential lecturer, essayist, and transcendental philosopher. Thoreau would be my guess. Say that again, Colin. Thoreau. Henry David Thoreau. Mm -hmm. Any objections? Yeah. No. All right. Final answer, Thoreau. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. He was indeed a transcendental philosopher, but uh, it was Ralph Waldo Emerson. Kyle, you were in the right ballpark there for sure. And question number six, multiple choice. In what year did the Cold War officially end when the Berlin Wall came down? Was it 1959, 1989, or 1999? 89. 89, right? 89. All right, yeah. uh, final response, 89. That is correct, and that completes round one. Hey, Mr. Wright, can, can we read question, question one, please? I'm gonna yeah. ask him, thank you. Can you read question one, please, again? Yeah. 
in what U.S. state will you find the cities of Cheyenne, Casper, Laramie, and Gillette? And TJ responded Wyoming, and that is the correct answer. Wyoming is. Thank you. Sorry mm -hmm. about that. <laughs> Disappointing. Thank you, Beth and Kelly. When I was reading, I'm like, I know Cheyenne's Wyoming, but I guess the other ones were Montana. So, sorry about that. All right. One, two, three, four. All right, round two. Math round. Uh, four questions. A reminder, in the math questions, you are allowed 30 seconds. Ms. Meisner will give you a prompt when there's five seconds to go. And remember, in this round and all future rounds now, one up for a right answer, one down for an incorrect answer, including no answer. Okay? Would you please introduce yourselves to us for round two and tell me who the captain is? I'm Ray Wong, and I'll be the captain for this round. I'm Elliot Anderson. I'm Johnny. I'm Colin Jones. Okay. We're off for round two, and round two is a math round, and the first question is a math question, so here we go. Find the domain of the following function. Y equals 1 divided by the quantity 3x minus 8 in time. Think. Oh, I have it. What is yours? Uh, I, I I forget. Sorry, I didn't. I I assumed you'd get this one, so I didn't. Uh, so, Colin, you have anything? Negative infinity to eight thirds. Eight thirds to positive infinity. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's what I have. Uh, that's final right. answer. All real numbers except x equals eight thirds. Yes. That is correct. Right, Kelly. Yeah, <laughs> good. Question number two. Double jeopardy is forbidden by which constitutional amendment? If on trial and wishing to not incriminate yourself, you may invoke this amendment. Name it. It's the fifth. Any objections? Yeah. Fifth? That is correct. Question number three. Math. How many radians is 270 degrees? Three halves, right? Uh, three pi over two, yeah. Any objections? Final answer, three pi over two. That is correct. And question number four. Give the name of the character that identifies the sidekick of Sherlock Holmes. Watson. Final answer, Watson. Dr. John Watson, that is correct, and that completes round one. Oh, excuse me, round two. Good job, guys. One, two, three, four. All right. Uh, my people right here, right? People that love books and love films, because this is the pre-announced category round, round three, uh, book to screen adaptations. Please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the care uh, the uh, captain in this round. My name's Harmony. I'll be captain again. I'm Jeremiah Taylor. I'm Mariana Schwartz. And Elliot's already with us. Okay. Uh, reminder, the answer is going to be the name of the film. It could be the name of the book as well, but the film is what I'm looking for. And these are kind of long questions, so you may want to listen carefully to the whole thing. Question number one. This novel was eventually made into two films, actually even three, although the novel itself was made into two films, and both won Best Picture Oscars. The first film focuses on the middle of the novel, and the second film uses both the beginning and the ending of the novel. Name the book that explores the connection between Sicily and the New York mobsters, and it has the father come from Sicily to the United States and the son go back to Sicily to escape a potential murder conviction. Father, the Godfather killed you. You said the Godfather yeah. killed you? Godfather, yeah. Is everyone good with that? All right, um, final answer the Godfather trilogy. That is correct. The Godfather is fine. That's all you needed, right? It's actually made into two films and actually three films, so the trilogy would be correct. Too. <clears throat> Question number two This 1929 novel was adapted for film twice, 1931 and 1941. The later version starred Humphrey Bogart as Sam Spade, who takes a case brought to him by Miss Wanderlei that involves finding a valuable statuette. Sam's partner is killed. 
Miss Wanderley is most definitely untrustworthy, and a web of crime and intrigue ensue. In this noir classic written by Dashiell Hammett. Elliot, we can't hear you. I still can't hear you. We have to call time, but Elliot, if you type it in the chat, we'll take it. The problem might be feedback from Ariana's uh, mic, I think. Go ahead, Elliot. Oh, I said either Casablanca or Maltese Falcon. Whatever you guys think. Um, I'm not sure Falcon's Bogart, but I know Casablanca is. We'll go with that, maybe. Which Last one? Week? You have an answer now. The Maltese Falcon? It is the Maltese Falcon. Good. You got it. Question number three. The book was published in 1967, and the film came out in 1983. In the book, the young hero constantly thinks and talks about his dead parents who died in a car crash, leaving him and his two brothers to fend for themselves. But in the film, only a brief dream flashback alludes to the parents. The book focuses more on the relationship between the two younger brothers, while the film focuses on the hero and his relationship with Johnny, who dies after helping to rescue some kids in a burning church. Name the book written by Essie Hinton or the film directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Well, it's got a lot of great ones, but I really don't know. Um, this is um. Oh my gosh, it, I'm losing it. What is it? Time. Response, please. Uh, no response. The Outsiders. The Outsiders. Great book. Great film. That completes round three. Okay, one, two, three, and there's Harmony Beck. Okay, round four, seven questions on a variety of topics. Please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this last round. Um, I'm Harmony, I'll be captain again. I'm Ben Marshall. I'm Colin Jones. And I'm Ray Wong. Okay, off we go then. Question number one. This country's northern border includes the North Sea, the Baltic Sea, and Denmark. In this European country? Um, Germany or the Netherlands, I think. Is the Netherlands directly Netherlands. south of Denmark? Does anyone know? What is it? Time. Netherlands, I do know. Okay, uh, final answer Netherlands. Sorry, it's Germany. <laughs> Germany. Anita? Okay, question number two. An important technique in agriculture and urban development that involves tree plantings on both sides of a river or creek in order to decrease runoff of sediment and toxins is called what? Anyone? No. I don't know the Cross name for stream. it. Hmm? Cross stream? I don't know. Time. Final answer, cross stream. It's worth a try, right? No. Riparian buffer. Riparian buffer. Question number three. Who was the pilot of the first fatal air crash? He and his brother Wilbur were credited with inventing, building, and flying the world's first motor-operated airplane. Name him. Wilbur? Because his brother's Orville and it's Orville and Wilbur, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's the Wright brothers. Orville, right? No, no, no. It's second. He, asked, he said it was a brother of Orville, so I think it's Wilbur. No, he said Wilbur. Yeah. Yeah, he said Wilbur. No, he said Orville. Okay, I'll yeah. <laughs> answer Orville. Yes, and that's what a good captain does and a good team does. They talk it out and they figure it out. Exactly. That was correct. I did say Wilbur and Orville was what I was looking for. Question number four. E.B. White wrote this children's book about the value of true friendship. Wilbur the pig yearns for a true friend throughout the story, only to realize he has had one all along. Name this touching story about an unlikely friendship between pig and insect. Charlotte's oh, Web. Yeah. All right, final answer, Charlotte's Web. I can barely choke it out. It's so sweet and touching, right? That is correct. Question number five. 
What is the only movie character that won Oscars for two different actors? Marlon Brando and Robert De Niro both won an Oscar playing this character. Name him. Who did he say in Robert De Niro? Brando and Nero. Chewbacca? Wait, what is it? Huh. Chewbacca? That's just, I don't Time. know what I'm out there. Uh... Final answer, Chewbacca. It's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely not Chewbacca. <laughs> ah, damn it. Um, but that was worth a shot, right? Uh, Vito Corleone. Vito Corleone. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Question number six. That's a great answer, I must say. Question number six. Before taking its current name, what company was originally called Backrub? Due to its dominance as a search engine, this company's name has become a transitive verb. Name the company. Google. Google. Yeah. Okay, final answer, Google. That is correct. And question number seven. In 1791, what was the first state to join the Union after the original 13? The people of this territory wanted to get free from the state of New York. Name the state that leads the United States in the production of maple syrup. Vermont. Mm. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Final answer, Vermont. That is correct, and that completes the match for TJ High. Well done. All right. Good job, guys. Lean on next. <clears throat> yeah. Science is tough tonight. What? What's tough? The science. The science is very tough. And I, you know, when I'm reading these questions, I don't know if they're hard or easy. So, but at least they're consistently hard. So I'd say they're hard. But again, I haven't been in high school science in a long time. I so. always tell my science teachers, I want you to tell me questions that smart kids in chemistry or biology will know. Right. That, that's always my, my thing. So, but, but, you know, they're not, they're not academic team people. So they're not sure. Okay. You can send me the score on your end to compare. All right, Lingenor High School. I see one, two, three. Oh, there's Mr. Han. And four. There we go. Okay. Welcome, Lingenor High School, to our third and final match tonight in our sixth week of our academic tournament. Please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round. Hi, I'm Tabitha Moses. I'm Abel Heine. I'm Chloe Williams. I'm Charlotte Moore, and I will be captain for this round. All right, Charlotte, then, uh, Charlotte, please pick for us packet A, X, or Z. Out of pressure. A. A, wow. Usually it's X and Z that go first, so. Wait a minute. it up. Do your own thing, that's right. Okay. <clears throat> Round one, a grab bag, six questions on a variety of topics, one up for right answer, no points off for wrong answer. Question number one, one. who wrote the science fiction novel, The Martian Chronicles? Yeah, I, it wouldn't be Jules Verne, but like he did write a lot of sci-fi type stuff. So just go with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jules Verne, final answer? No, I was Ray Bradbury. Ray Bad Bradbury. Jules Verne did write a lot of science fiction, it's true. Question number two. The Washington Mystics are a professional U.S. team in what sport? I think it's basketball. Yeah. That's a I sport. I don't know sports, but 
I'll trust you. Basketball. Fine. Charlotte? Basketball, final answer. That is correct. And yes, good job. Good job working together as a team there. They're, they're an excellent team in DC. Question number three, multiple choice. What is a calendar used for in cooking? Is it for measuring the weight of vegetables and fruits, draining and rinsing food, or steaming fish? I think that's for like the washing of fruit. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Wait, okay. I don't I don't know I don't know if my is I think my internet might be glitching. I, I'm you, hmm. um washing fruit, final answer. Yeah, that says a draining and rinsing food or fruit. Yep, exactly right. Question number four. This was the leader of the United States whose 14 points provided the basis for negotiations for the Treaty of Versailles. Name this 28th U.S. president. Um, yeah, that's Wilson, right? Yeah, Wilson. Wilson, yeah. final answer. That's correct. Question number five, multiple choice. When alkali metals react with water, a violent reaction occurs. Which best describes this reaction? Is it A, an endothermic single replacement reaction, B, an exothermic single replacement reaction, C, an endothermic double replacement reaction, or D, an exothermic double replacement reaction? I believe this is, I believe this is exothermic and single replacement. Okay. Yeah. What do you want to say? Yeah. Uh, okay. Answer. Option B. Yes, option B. An exothermic single replacement reaction. That is correct. And question number six: What is the capital city of Cambodia or Kampuchea, which is located on the river Mekong? Um. I'm going to butcher the pronunciation because I have no yeah. in Cambodian, but I think it's now Phnom Penh. Sure. Yeah. Um, I apologize for any mispronunciation here, but Phnom Penh. I'm pretty sure you're saying it exactly right. Yes, very matter, cool. No. Well done. Well done. That completes round one. One, two, three, four. Okay, here we go, Lingonor. Round two, a math round. Uh, four questions. Reminder, on the math questions, you get 30 seconds to respond. And Ms. Meisner will give you a uh, prompt when there's five seconds left. And remember, in this round and all future rounds now, one up for a correct answer, one off for an incorrect answer, including one off if you give no answer. So take your best shot. Could you please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round? I'm Bennett Von Aiken. I'm Zach Branch. I'm Thomas Scott. And I'm Leif Colgren. I'll be the captain for this round. Good. Okay. Round two, question one, math. Find the domain of the following function. Y equals the square root of the quantity 125 minus X cubed in time. Um, I think that's negative infinity, uh, comma five with a bracket, comma five included, because anything below zero, it'll be positive, and then once it gets to five, sure. Uh, um, negative, yeah, that's true. Negative infinity, comma five. Final answer. That's correct. And Leif, you explained it so well, I almost understood it. I didn't, but still, it sounded good. Excellent. Question number two. I quote, so much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater besides the white chickens. Poetry, such as this lovely poem by William Carlos Williams that contains no specific rhythm or rhyme is known as what kind of verse? Formulaic. Uh, I don't have anything else, so we can go with that, yeah. I think leaf cut out, so just give that. Uh, formulaic, formulaic. No, final answer. I'm sorry, it's uh, it's free verse, kind of the opposite of formulaic, actually, but right idea. I feel badly about going ahead. Leaf, are you back? Yeah, sorry. Good. No, I was just worried that you were frozen. Okay, good. 
Uh, question three, math. How many radians is 300 degrees? Um, that's what? Pi that's five pi over three, right? Yeah, that's five pi over three. Yeah, five um, pi over three. Five pi over three radians? That is correct. And question number four. This Disney character from a 2002 film is also known as Experiment 626. Name this blue koala-like alien who is about three feet tall and is adopted by a six-year-old named Lilo. Stitch. Stitch. Stitch, final answer. That's correct, and that completes round two. Well done. <clears throat> okay, we've got four. And these are my people right here, people that like books and films, right? Because, yes, I am with you. All right, this is a pre-announced category. Book to screen adaptations. Reminder, the answer is going to be the name of the film. It might be the name of the book, too, but the film is what I'm looking for. And these are kind of long questions, so make sure you listen to the whole thing. Would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this fun round? I'm Tabitha Moses. I'm Mabel Hyde. I'm Chloe Trevino. And I'm Eric Spudgy. I'll be captain for this film. Very good, Eric. Okay. All right. Question number one. The 1959 book, a nonfiction account of the murder of the Clutter family by Dick Hickok and Perry Smith, is the second best-selling true crime book ever. The 1967 film was written and directed by Richard Brooks, and some of the book's conventions were, conversations were used, although they were simplified and shortened. Name the film based on the book by Truman Capote with help from Harper Lee. Is this Cold Blood? Or... Yes, Time. it is. Um, okay. Two bloody shit? Time. Cold. cold. Oh, cold What's blood, it? final answer. Say it one more time, Eric. Cold blood, final answer. I cannot give it to you. I'm sorry. It's called In Cold Blood. In Cold Blood. I hate to do it, but that's a title, so you have to get the whole thing. So I apologize. You were very close. Question number two. This novella focused on the imprisonment of a small, meek man wrongly accused and his friendship with a white Irishman. The film changes the friendship by casting a black actor for the part of the friend and casting a tall, handsome actor for the convict accused of murdering his wife and the lover she was with. Name the film that featured not only Rita Hayworth on a poster, but Marilyn Monroe and Raquel Welch on a poster as well. First of all, sorry, Chloe. And second of all, um, is that Shawshank Redemption? Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, yeah. I think it is. All right. um, Shawshank Redemption, final answer. Yes, excellent, good. My favorite film. Question number three. This classic novel has been made into a movie dozens of times, and the lead role is considered the dream role of every actress. That's in quotes, so lots of people feel that way. Indeed, Greta Garbo, Vivian Leigh, and Kira Knightley have all played the role of the unhappy wife of a wealthy Russian bureaucrat. In the novel, Konstantin Levin and his courtship and marriage to Kitty Sherbatsky takes up almost half of the story. But the film focuses more on the wife and her affair with Count Vronsky. Name the novel by Leo Tolstoy or the film, most recently directed by Joe Wright in 2012. Um, that's a if that's about Leo Tolstoy, it's that that's a Tolstoy novel about a wife's infidelity. I think that's going to be uh, uh, what is Anna Karenina? I think so. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Oh. Time. All right. Anna Karenina, final answer. That is correct. And good job and well done on the category round. Yes, yeah, that was bad luck on the one. Well done. We've got Charlotte back. One, two, three, four. All right, we are set then with Lingonore High School for the fourth and final round. Please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the uh, captain in this last round. I'm Toby Ellis. I'm Eric Swatchy. I'm Leif Colgren. I'm Charlotte Moore, and I will be captain for this round. Very good. Okay, round four, here we go. Question one. The Rhine and the Rhone rivers both pass through this country, but it is better known for the River Seine. Name the country. 
France? That's France. Yeah. Okay. France, final answer? That is correct. Question number two. The technique used in sustainable agriculture that involves alternating rows of different crops is called what? Oh, geez. Um, well, since it's like mixed agriculture, what? Um, I was going to say crop rotation, but that's probably not it. It's worth a shot. Time. Um, crop rotation, final answer. That, no, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. That was worth a shot, but um, that, that's a different uh, thing. This one is called strip cropping when they all, alternating rows of different crops. So that was worth a try. Question number three. Dating from the 6th century, what is the world's oldest snack food? An Italian monk who was a fine baker made these treats for his young church attendees. Name the snack food made of baked pastry dough and usually tied in a knot. Um, what pretzel? Is it a pretzel? Might be. I thought pretzels were German, but... I think so, but I'm not sure what else. Time. Um, pretzel, final answer? Definitely the old knot in the dough. That is correct. Yeah. Yes, I know. They were associated with Germany for sure, but they must have come from Italy first. Who knew? Question number four. In this man's life is a famous tale. Let me try that again. In this man's life in a famous tale, he was born poor and unwanted, worked for Mr. Fezziwig before becoming more wealthy himself, and refused to marry Belle, who accused him of loving money more than anything, including her. He had a partner named Jacob Marley who died. Name this famous miser. That's my man's Ebenezer. Well, oh, name the guy. Yeah, because it's Ebenezer. Yeah. Ebenezer Scrooge, final answer. I was afraid you were just going to say the first name. I was like, well, I need more, but then you got it. Good. Question number five. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, Bambi, the first Disney movie that did not have what kind of characters? There were deer, of course, and rabbits, and a skunk, and all kinds of forest animals for characters. What kind of character was missing? A princess? I was thinking human. Yeah, I, I was thinking oh, human. That's, but isn't there a hunter in Bambi? I don't know if he actually shows up. Or is he just but implied? It might be... Pr I'm not Fine. sure. Um, human, final answer. Yes, it is human. So the, the hunter is off screen, yes, so we don't actually uh, see him. So good, good. Question number six. Her full name is Barbara Millicent Roberts, but she is never called this by her friends Midge or Teresa or her former boyfriend Ken. Name this doll whose measurements in human terms would be five feet, nine inches tall with a bust of 39 inches and a waist of 18 inches. Barbie, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Barbie, final answer. Did you know it was Barbara Millicent Roberts? I did not know that, but it is. And question number seven. Mount St. Helens, after two months of earthquakes, erupted in 1980 with a blast that leveled millions of trees. Name the U.S. state in which this took place. Washington. Washington, yeah. Washington. Washington, final answer. That is correct, and that completes an excellent round for Linganore. Well done. I knew Barbara Millicent Roberts only because that trivia is on a past trivia PowerPoint for academic tournament. Excellent. Excellent. So if they were paying attention, they would have known. I knew the measurements were outrageous. It might have been from last year. But it might have been from two years ago. I missed those um, days. Ms. Meisner, can you do the count for a moment? I have to step out for just a moment. And we're at Middletown High School now, right? We are, and they are. Thank you. One, two, three.
Brian, I think you're in here. Oh, there you are. I was like, I think you're in here. I think we got all four. Let's hear it. Okay. Welcome Middletown High School to the third and final match of our sixth night of uh, the academic competition. Please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round. I'm Ryan Lawler, and I'll be the captain this round. I'm Aiden Nair. I'm Brian Linthicum. I'm Abby Lapadula. Okay, and Brian, would you please pick for me packet X or packet Z? Go with uh, packet Z. Z, I don't think X has ever been left last, but it was today. Okay, these are uh, six questions on a variety of topics. One up for a right answer, no points off for a wrong answer. Question number one. In 1935, this city became the first city to win three major sports championships in the same year. When the Lions won the NFL title, the Tigers won the World Series, and the Red Wings won the Stanley Cup. Name this city. Detroit, final answer. That's my dream year, but I, of course, was nowhere near alive in 1935. And the Lions will never win the Super Bowl, but still, you knew it. Good. Question number two. This flower's name derived from a mythological character's name. This character spends hours looking at his reflection and admiring his own beauty, so much so that he fell in love with his own reflection. Name the flower whose name derives from this character or the character himself. Narcissus. Final answer. Yes, that is good. Excellent. Ryan, just right. Yeah, that's the one. Exactly, Ryan. Good captaining. Question number three. What was the first car that was mass produced? Uh, the Model T, final answer. Yep, Model T Ford, that's right. Question number four. Iceland has the northernmost capital city in the world. Name it. Reykjavik. Final answer. Abigail, don't you like how we trust you? It's like, yes, Abigail knows that one. You got it, good. Question number five. The density of 10 grams of aluminum metal is 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. What is the density of 20 grams of aluminum? Would it be the same? Uh, I don't know. I think so. Uh, it would be the same, final answer. That is correct, 2.7 grams, exactly right. Question number six, 538 people make up this college that elects the president of the United States every four years. Name it. The Electoral College, final answer. Yeah, I wrote that question back in September when I didn't think that many people would know it, but we all know it now. That is correct. That completes round one. One, two, three, four. All right, four. All right, Middletown, welcome to round two. This is a math round, four questions. Reminder on the two math questions, you have 30 seconds to answer. Ms. Meisner will prompt you with five seconds left to go. And reminder, in this round and all subsequent rounds, one up for a right answer, but one off for a wrong answer. And that includes if you don't know the answer. So take your best guess, right? Okay, would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who the captain will be in this round? I'm Abby Lapidola, and I'll be the captain. I'm Hannah Lapidola. I'm Nicole Silberman. I'm Brian Linthicum. Okay, here we go then. Round two is a math round, and the first question is math. Find the domain of the following function. Y equals the square root of the quantity 36 plus X squared. Begin time. Uh, I guess it's all real. Okay. All real. All real numbers, final answer. That's correct. Excellent. Question number two. In this Agatha Christie classic mystery, prominent detective Hercule Perrault solves the mystery while on a train to Istanbul. Name the novel. Uh, Murder on the Orient Express. Correct. Okay. Final answer. Yep, that is correct. Abigail's learning from Ryan. Oh, yeah, let's let her say it. Good. <clears throat> Question number three, math. How many, 
How many degrees is pi over two radians? Ninety degrees, final answer. That is correct. Question number four. Andrew Jackson's troops in the War of 1812 are why this is the volunteer state. Name the state. I don't know. I, I don't know. Mississippi? I don't know. It's either, I feel like it's either that or Oklahoma. My first thought was huh. Oklahoma. Okay. Final answer, Oklahoma. I'm sorry, Tennessee. The Tennessee Volunteers. Mm -hmm. That completes round two. One, two, three, four. These are my people right here. You people, because this is a category about books and films, right? And books and films are things that we all love here. Pre-announced category, uh, book to screen adaptations. Rem a couple of reminders. Uh, first, the answer is going to be the name of a film. Might be the name of the book too, but the film is what I'm looking for. And these are kind of long questions, so make sure you listen to the whole thing. Would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this fun round? My name is Mona Webster and I'll be the captain. I'm Nicole Silberman. I'm Ryan Lawler. And I'm Kalina Nair. Okay, then here we go. Question number one. This book was impossible to film due to its fantasy setting and creatures until the 21st century brought the ability to create almost anything. While Tom Bombadil did not appear in the film, director Peter Jackson got almost everything else right, which pleased the fantasy series Legion of Fans, myself included. Name either the first film or the name of the trilogy of both books and films about a ring and the saving of the world from evil. <laughs> Would you guys agree that it's the Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Final answer. Lord of the Rings, or the first one is the Fellowship of the Rings. They're all fantastic. I remember where I was. I was watching The Matrix when the first preview came on, and I went, oh, I couldn't wait. And it turned out to be even better than I hoped. So a little, little memory for you to share there. Question number two. The adaptation of this book to film is different than most, as there were very few differences. Indeed, the screenwriters won an Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay, and they directly credited author Cormac McCarthy for almost all the writing. Name this book and film that features Sheriff Ed Tom Bell, villain Anton Chigurh, and Llewellyn Moss as the man who finds a bag filled with money. Cormac McCarthy's um, No Country for Old Men is the first thing that comes to mind. But do you guys, I'm not like not 100% sure. So what do you think? It's No Country for Old Men. Okay, yeah. Final response, No Country for Old Men. Yes, it is a great book and a great movie. Excellent, Meadow. Question number three. The novel by Peter Benchley focuses more on the underworld connections of the mayor of Amity Island and has a completely different ending for the oceanographer, Matt Hooper. In the film, most of the attention is on the three men venturing out on the orca to stop a monster. Name the book by Bench or the film directed by a young Steven Spielberg. Ryan, I see you nodding your head. You want to chime in? Jaws. Up? Yeah. Final response, Jaws. It was. Uh, not a great book, but a fun movie for sure. That completes round three. Well done, all three. Three, four. All right, are we ready then for round four? Here we go, Middletown, with one last round. Round four, seven questions on a variety of topics. Please introduce yourselves one last time and tell me who will be the captain in this round. I'm Christian West, and I'm the captain. I'm Kalina Nair. I'm Gabrielle Page. And I'm Meta Webster. All right, then. Here we go, Middletown, with round four, question number one. Located in southwestern Europe, this country includes the Canary Islands as its southernmost autonomous community. Name the country. Is it Spain? Is it, it's either Spain or Portugal, and I think it's Spain. All right, Spain, final answer. Yep, and good job. Western Europe, got to be one of those two, right? You got it. Question number two. The quote, equal volumes of different gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of particles, is made by which scientist? 
Um, any ideas? I remember learning this, but I'm sorry, I forgot. Is it Avogadro? I, I think we should go with that if no one else has a better answer. Sure. What, what is it? Avogadro. Final answer. That is correct. Excellent. Excellent. Nicely done, Gabrielle. Very good. Question number three. What organization was the predecessor to the United Nations? It was an international diplomatic group developed after World War I as a way to solve disputes between countries before a war could start. It was established in 1920 and disbanded after the United Nations was founded in 1945. Name it. League of Nations, final answer. That is correct. Question number four. In the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, Dorian starts out as an innocent and beautiful young man. A portrait of him is painted and given to him. What happens to his portrait? Um, it becomes distorted because all of his wrongdoings are like conflicted onto the portrait, so it becomes really ugly. Final answer. Yes, that is exactly. <laughs> you described it perfectly, Meadow. Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, and it, he he looks awful in the painting, but he's still gorgeous in real life. Right. <clears throat> that Oscar Wilde. Question number five: What film has the insults? I don't want to talk to you no more, you empty-headed animal food trough. Your mother was a hamster, and your father smelt of elderberries. The same film also has a black knight stating his injury was just a flesh wound. Name this 1975 British comedy. Uh, isn't Monty, Monty Python. Yeah. Yeah. What is, yeah, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Final answer. Yes, you had to have the whole thing, and you did. Good. Question number six. What continent has the largest number of Roman Catholics? Hmm. So it could be South America, Europe, maybe. Mm -hmm. Time. South America. Yes, excellent uh, call there at the end. Yes, that's one of those questions where when you think about it, it makes perfect sense, but the first thought might not be that right. And question number seven. This state has 54 mountains at least 14,000 feet high, the most in the United States. Name this state with the mile high city. It's Colorado, right? Yeah, Col Colorado, final answer. That is correct. And that completes a very nice match for Middletown High School. Well played. You wouldn't think that one match going in overtime would kill my knees and back, but it did. <laughs> oh my God. I am about to fall asleep. <laughs> Next time I'm going to say, I need a break no matter what, because uh, ugh, this is hard. Sorry, all of you in recording world. <laughs> I took two ibuprofen already. Thank you. <laughs> nice you know, honey. All right, here we go. One more to go. Oakdale. I still have a little sushi to this nipple. No, it's not um, yeah. Nope. Ready for you to be done. Almost. They're kind of getting better. This is fascinating. I'm, I'm doing your questions. Okay, Oakdale, we're ready for cameras on for round one. One, two, three, four. All right. Welcome, Oakdale, to the uh, third and final match of our sixth night of the academic tournament. Would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in round one? I'm Mason Scott, and I'm the captain. I'm Akash Agarwal. I'm Aryan Kolatia. I'm Avery Powers. Okay. Off we go, then, with round one. Grab bag round of questions. One up for a right answer. No points off for a wrong answer. And here we go with question number one. James Weldon Johnson, Claude McKay, and Langston Hughes. These poets all wrote during the 1920s and were literary representatives of a movement that first recognized the contributions of African Americans to the world of art, music, and literature. What do we call the literary movement represented by these men? I think it's Harlem Renaissance. Yeah, I yeah. think so, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Harlem Renaissance, final answer. That is correct. Question number two. Where were the Utah Jazz originally located? They were founded in 1974 in this Louisiana city, famous for jazz music. Name the city. Wait, Louisiana? 
New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. 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 New Orleans. That's um, correct. Yeah. Utah yeah. Jazz doesn't really make sense, does it? But that, that's, that's where they are. Question number three. What car sold more than 1 million units in 1965 and still holds that record today? It's a Chevrolet and shares its name with a medium-sized antelope found in Africa. Name it. Uh, medium-sized antelope? antelope? Uh, I don't know. Chevy Cruze? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's time. Uh, Chevy Cruze? That's worth a shot, right? No, the Impala, the Chevy Impala. Uh, yeah. Question, that was a hard one. Question number four. This question requires a two-part answer. Pieces of zinc metal are added to a solution of cupric sulfate. What products will be formed? I'm not sure. Is it the... Wait, is it? I have no idea. Copper sulfate or zinc sulfate? Time. Copper sulfate and zinc sulfate. You got it. Good. Excellent. Well done. Nice. Question number five. In what year did India gain its independence from Britain? Two years after World War II ended. 1947. Yeah. Yeah. 1947. That is correct. And question number six. What South American country was home to the Inca Empire? Peru. Peru. Yeah. Peru. Yeah. Peru, final answer. That is correct. And that completes an excellent round one. And there's one, two, three, four. Welcome, um, Oakdale, to round two, the math round. Reminder, in these four questions, there are going to be two math questions. You have 30 seconds to answer the math questions. Remember, Ms. Meisner will prompt you when there's five seconds left. And remember, in this round and now on, one up for a right answer, but one off for a wrong answer, and that includes a no answer. So if you have a shot at anything, it doesn't hurt to guess. Would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round? I'm Avery Powers. I'm the captain. I'm, I'm Mackenzie Malka. I'm Rohan Jaggi. Okay, off we go then with the math round. And first question is a math question. Find the domain of the following function. Y equals 1 divided by the quantity X cubed minus 1. Again, time. Um... Is it negative infinity to one and then one to infinity? Are you guys yeah, like true. what? That's one thing to say. Okay. Yeah, just click the one. All right. Rohan McKenzie. Yeah. I yeah. That. Okay. Um, final answer negative infinity to one, one to infinity. That is correct. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly looks at me like, uh, yeah, yes. Uh, that is correct. Excellent. Right? Question number two. This state got its nickname the Centennial State because it became a state in 1876. Name this mountainous state. Is it Colorado? Colorado. Yeah, Colorado. Colorado. Final answer, Colorado. That is correct. Question number three, math. How many degrees is seven pi over six radians? I'm pretty sure you multiply by 180 over pi. So I'm getting 210. What do you guys get? Um, yeah, 210. I got 210. All right. Yeah, I got 210. Okay. 210, final answer. That's correct. They know their radians, Ms. Meisner, for sure. That completes round two. Well done. Do they have a fourth question? No, we did that. Oh, okay. yes. No, no, no. I don't think I missed that question, didn't I? Yes, I, I'm sorry. Come back to me. Are you here? Yeah. Sorry. I, I, see, Ms. Mr. Katsi, this is why I didn't want him on the front and back of the page. I messed up. Question four of the math round. Are we ready? Non-math question. Here we go. Question four. How many electrons are in the outer shell of a bromine atom? Seven. All right. I'll take your word. It's going to run at seven, right? Fairly sure. Yeah, because whenever it would be a double gas, that'd be eight, so it's seven. Yeah. 
All right, seven, final answer. Yes, and I'm really glad you got that right. I would have felt badly if you didn't, so yes, correct, good. <laughs> And there we are. We have four. These people, you, you're my people. You know why I know you're my people? Because this is a category about books and films, correct? And that's yeah. two things that you and I both love. So round three, book to screen adaptations. A couple reminders first. The answer is going to be the name of the film. Might be the name of the book too, but the film is what I'm looking for. Secondly, these are pretty long questions, so make sure you listen to the whole thing. Would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this very fun round? I'm Lucas Shortridge. I'm Kathleen. I'm Rohan Jaggi. I'm Davina Bhatia. I'm Brooklyn Miller. All right, then here we go. Question number one. The book was written by Charles Portis and featured a fearless young heroine named Maddie Ross. There are two film versions from 1969 and 2010. The early version can be considered the clean version with the young heroine helping a lawman and a Texas Ranger played by Glenn Campbell to bring in the man who killed her father. The 2010 version is much rougher, and Matt Damon played the Texas Ranger who helped her, along with the older lawman. Name the films that have both John Wayne and Jeff Bridges playing Rooster Cogburn. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I'm gonna know, but I can't. Ron, do you have any idea? I don't have an idea, I don't think. Time. No answer. Oh, the book is great. The, the 69 movie with John Wayne is good. And the 2010 movie that the Coen brothers did is also very good. True Grit. True Grit. The book is the best of the three, honestly. Question number two. The novel was written by Ian McEwan and featured a young writer named Bryony Tallis who had a crush on a lower class friend uh, named Robbie Turner. Robbie, in turn, had a crush on Bryony's older sister, Cecilia, and writes her a note that goes terribly awry. In the film, Bryony opens the note and sees in large type letters the off-color words that Robbie did not intend to send. Name the novel and film written by Ian McEwan and starring Kieran Knightley, James McAvoy, and Shursa Ronan. I don't recognize. No, I have no idea. Time. No answer. Uh, was maybe the best movie of the last 20 years. That's just my humble opinion, but Atonement. It's also a wonderful, wonderful book. Question number three. The book was written by Khalid Hosseini in 2003, and it's a story of an unlikely friendship between a wealthy boy and the son of his father's servant. The film, directed by Mark Foster in 2007, stays pretty faithful to the book, although the character Hassan has a cleft lip in the novel, and his rape scene is much more explicit in the book. Name this novel and film about guilt, friendship, forgiveness, and the desire for atonement that is set in Afghanistan in the United States. Is it The Kite Runner? I'm not entirely sure. I think we should just go with that. I think that, that sounds familiar, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Kite Runner, final answer. Yes, it is a great, powerful book. Good job, Nina. Excellent. That is round three. I'm glad you got that one right. Off we go. We did well overall on book to screen, right? And now we've got one, two, three, four players ready to go for round four. Okay, final round. Uh, seven questions on a variety of topics. Please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this last round. I'm Ray Flegel and I'm the captain. I'm Brooke Wendler. I'm Davina Batia. I'm Tara Hug. Okay, off we go then. Round four, question one. This country has three official languages, German, French, and Italian, but also has a small Romanish speaking population. Name this country considered a neutral country in Europe. Probably, probably Eastern Europe. Yeah. It's neutral, so could it be on Switzerland? Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, Switzerland is right between all those countries. That'd probably be our best guess. Yeah, I'd say we just go with that. Uh, Switzerland, final answer. 
Yes, and that's good captaining, Reed. You listened to Davina and then made the right call. Good, good answer. Thank Question you. number two. <clears throat> For air quality standards, <clears throat> let me try that again. For air quality standards, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, solid or liquid particles suspended in the air are called what? I don't know. There's maybe pollution. I have no clue. I don't know. No answer. Okay, well, you were in the right ballpark there. It's uh, it's called particulate matter or particulate pollution, or PM ten slash two point five, uh, whatever that means. But uh, but you were in the right idea with pollution, particulate pollution, more specifically. Question number three. That's sunshine having the rips over there, paying no attention to the scurrying sound of the uh, hoofed animal there. Question number three. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of this country during a visit to Sarajevo is widely credited with starting the First World War. This country had a population of nearly 9 million, and its official language is German, although many citizens communicate in a variety of Bavarian dialects. Name the country in Central Europe where Archduke Ferdinand was from. Austria, Hungary, right? Yeah. Yeah. Austria, yeah. Austria, Hungary. Yeah, I think Austria, Hungary. Okay, I'm not certain about. That. Yep, thank they you, Mr. Correct. Thank Excellent. You. Question number four. Stephen King, at last count, has written at least 86 novels. I've read all of them. What was his first, published in 1974, about an unpopular high school girl who discovered telekinetic powers? Am I familiar with him? I don't Neither. Say Carrie, but I don't know. What was that? Carrie. I want to say that too. That's Is that Carrie? Yeah. Fine. Carrie, final answer? That's correct. Yes, Carrie. Exactly. Excellent. Question number five. Tim Curry played Dr. Frankenfurter in this 1975 musical comedy that has become a fan participation favorite, especially around Halloween. Name the film that also stars a young Susan Sarandon as Janet and many memorable songs, including Time Warp and Hot Patootie, Bless My Soul, sung by Meatloaf. This is not ringing a bell with me. Does anyone know that? I have no clue. Uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show, I think. Fine. I'm pretty confident. I'd go with it. Locky Horror Picture Show, final answer. Knew it, knew it. Yep, I saw it in your eyes, Brooke. You okay. got, absolutely got that right, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Question number six. There are 24 colored dots on the mat of this game that involves a spinner. Name the game of physical skill made by Milton Bradley. Twister. Twister. Yeah. Twister, final answer. It was fun when I was a kid. Now it would kill me. Right. Question number seven. What was the first nation to have a female prime minister? Name this island country in South Asia, formerly known as Ceylon. I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. Fine. No answer. Uh, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. And that completes the match. Very well done, Oakdale. Well played. And again, once again, I have no idea who did well and who did not well. Do we have a tie? Um, no. Good. But Austria Hungary is the empire, but he Austrian. That's I so appreciate you. I, I was like, well, I think that's right. But I, I love both you and Kelly. I can just look up and you're like shaking your head or going, yes. I'm like, I can just smoothly <laughs> transition. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice teamwork, ladies. All right, welcome back, everyone. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. A light night tonight, for sure. Coaches, if you could just hang out with me for a moment at the end, I'd appreciate it. Um, all righty. Well, tonight in fourth place with nine points, we had TJ. 
In third place with 11 points, we had Oakdale. In second place, we had Linganore with 13 points. And Middletown, you only got one question wrong tonight. You got 18 wow. points. Good job. Thank you all. We will see you. Coaches, stick around. We will see you next week for Summer Olympics. Exciting. Great job, Middletown. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah.